Welcome, everyone. My name is Gail Kurtzman, and on behalf of Beth Tikva Synagogue, I would like to thank you for joining us this morning as we prepare a delicious summer-inspired lunch with Amy Rosen. Just a reminder that this program will be recorded and to please remain on mute. Joining me today is also Doris Alter, our executive director, and she will be monitoring uh, your cooking questions in the chat, and Amy will aim to answer them as we go along. Now to introduce our special guest. Amy is no stranger to Beth Tikva. She grew up at the shul with her three brothers and her parents, founding members, Marsha and Fred Rosen. Amy is a James Beard nominated award-winning freelance journalist, Previously, she was the editor-in-chief of Modern Farmer, food editor at Chatelaine, and food editor at House and Home magazines. She also launched En Route magazine's Best New Restaurants in Canada feature, and she was uh, a food restaurant critic there. Amy has also written many cookbooks, and her fifth cookbook is Kosher Style. In the fall of 2019, we helped Amy launch her cookbook with an event at Beth Tikva. Her book is not only a terrific resource for the Jewish community, it is also a book filled with personal stories of growing up Jewish and preserving her family's legacy through food. We have chosen three recipes from Kosher Style and hopefully you'll prepare your lunch alongside Amy or just sit back and watch as she takes us on this culinary journey. And now I'll hand it over to Amy in her kitchen. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we're gonna make three really easy recipes today. Um, let me show you what they look like. And sorry, I have to be on this angle because I'm gonna show you what I'm doing on my little screen. So we're gonna make my Auntie Reet's Israeli salad and homemade labna. Um, for those of you who don't know what labna is, it's just kind of drained yogurt. I like to put salt and um, lemon zest in it. So if you have some yogurt and you have some cheesecloth, go get it now. Um, it's, it's spreadable. It's, it's like a schmear right with Israeli salad and pita. You scoop it up or it's just kind of a lower calorie option for your bagels. So that's going to be, we're going to make the Lebanon and Israeli salad first. And then we're going to make instant pickles. Ooh. Yeah, you won't believe how easy that is. And again, I'm using, oh, I dropped something. I'm using what's coming into season now. I'm kind of off asparagus right now, to be honest with you. Otherwise, I'd make asparagus. But hothouse tomatoes, cucumbers, these, it's kind of like our fresh taste all year round in Canada. So, especially now though. And then the final recipe will be, doo -doo -doo, farmer salad. So I don't know how many of you know what this is. This isn't something I grew up with, but my neighbor at the cottage, Judy, she, when I was putting together the ideas for the cookbook, she said, you need farmer salad. And that takes, this pressed cottage cheese, which we basically only use for blintzes as far as I'm, I know. You mix this with sour cream, springtime radishes, green onion, cucumber, and lemon zest. And it's kind of like another, you know, uh, like a scoop salad, like you'd get at um, United Bakers. You know, you get your scoop of tuna. You, it's a scoopy salad. So let's, if, if we have no questions and if people are ready with any sort of vegetables to, to cook along, I think you have the recipes, Gail. Yeah, people have them. I see yeah, everyone- people have them, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you choose to cook along, do it. If not, I'm just gonna be chopping away and just fire all the questions, nothing's off limits, and I'll just answer as I go, but- let me first start with the first one before you ask any questions. So I just got some yogurt from the supermarket and it's weird because it doesn't say what percent fat it is. I looked all over and then I guess if you look under fat, it says five grams, which 
Have you ever seen yogurt that it doesn't clearly say what the fat is on the front? I found that odd. So basically you want between two and 5% fat. I'm making a half recipe today, but all you do is you take a cheesecloth, double layer it, and then you're just going to put it in, pour your yogurt in. Normally it would be three cups. So you shouldn't lick your fingers while you're cooking, especially now, no licking the fingers, no touching the hair. And now we're gonna sprinkle some salt in it and mix that up. And then all mm -hmm. you do, yes. Maybe what kind of salt do you use? Table salt, kosher salt? I actually never use table salt anymore. I use sea salt if you need it fine for recipes and you know to be incorporated. Kosher salt for, uh, if you want it just like the chunkier, you wanna feel it. So on a roast chicken um, and then finishing salt like Malden, if you want it more delicate, kind of the finishing on a salad or a piece of fish or whatever. So I'm not a fancy person, but I, I do think that you do need those three types of salt in your house now, now that we know better, you know? There used to be one type of salt, basically. Okay, so this is gonna drain, but I'll show you my little contraption that I set up. I drained some yesterday. So, you're draining this, obviously, so the whey will come out, which is there. Just dump that out. You can also use the whey for a buttermilk substitute. So for marinating things, for dressings. Um, what else do we use buttermilk for? I guess that's about it, marinating and dressings. Pancakes, pancakes, waffles. Okay, so now look how dry this is. I can, see, I can hold it in my hand. It's like, it's, it's officially schmearable. So, the salt's already in there. And now to just freshen it up, I zest a lemon into it. And then this just takes it to the next level. You know, a little lemon zest does a lot for a dish. We stir it up. And then that's the first thing done. How easy is that? I'll show you what it looks like. Oops. See, it's like cream cheese. All right, we'll set that aside. And now to go with it, we have an Israeli salad. Um, by the way, so you saw how I was resting it. I used a clip balanced between two wooden spoons over the bowl. Another thing you could do is take the cheesecloth and tie it just to one of the racks and have the bowl dripping underneath. You could also tie it over one spoon and just, you know, basically it just has to be suspended. Not rocket science. Okay. So this is my Auntie Reitz um, Israeli salad. It's my favorite salad in the world. She's my favorite aunt in the world. And it goes great with the labne just because you know, it's such a nice lunch. You're just warm pita, you're scooping, you're smearing. So I'm making a half recipe today and it's just English cube. I mean, really you can time me with uh, how fast you can make Israeli salad. It's Amy, English cube, yes. Can you use other cucumber? Like the little cucumbers or Persian cucumbers? Yeah. Okay. You can use the little ones too, whatever okay, you have. Great. Okay. So it's cute. Oh, I closed the recipe. I pretty much know it off by heart and you should have it in front of you, but it's cucumber, tomato, sweet onion, a little bit of sweet onion, salt and pepper and lemon juice. And that's it. No oil, unnecessary. It's just like really embracing the freshness of the vegetables and the crunch and just everything good that grows in Ontario. 
Okay. And again, I'm using vine tomatoes because they were the best ones they had, but the baby tomatoes, the multicolored tomatoes, a beef steak, an heirloom, whatever you want. Recipes are a starting point, right? And then you can make it your own within reason. You know, I don't know how to silence this when I'm on for text. Has, I'm assuming everyone's had Israeli salad before. Okay. Now I'm wondering how many people have my book and have seen the photo of mine and my mother's matching mushroom haircuts from 1982. <laughs> or my bat mitzvah invitation or my parents' uh, wedding photo. So Amy, I did want to ask you a question because you dedicate the book to all the women in your life, especially your mother. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what influence your grandmothers, your boobies, your and your mother has had on your career and and what you've learned from them? Well, you know, in my family and, uh, you know, my dad's great and everything, but I've never seen him cook anything. So in terms of the kitchen, it all comes from the, uh, the women, right? The balabustas. So, and it's not just even, you know, this is my anti reed salad, for instance, it's not just my mom and my grandmothers and my aunts. It's like my friends, my friend, my friend, Joanna's granola recipe is in here. Her mother's spinach balls, like Growing up in these other households, you know, just visiting my friends and staying there on weekends, I had, you know, my eyes were open to other delicious foods. My friend Natasha, her, her family was largely vegetarian. So we'd have squash soup at Shabbat with a matzah ball in it. I'm like, I didn't know you could do that, but you know what? It's delicious and vegetarians are allowed to enjoy Shabbat too. So I, I just think for the most part, it's part of the culture that the women are doing most of the cooking. And so that's who influenced me the most, for sure. Amy, we have a question. Can you use almond-based yogurt, like silk plant-based yogurt to make the mock cream cheese? Oh, interesting. Um, okay, so I've never tried it. And I don't know if those alternative milks um, have actual whey coming out of them. I, I'm kind of guessing, again, a guess because I don't know, but I, I should try it out. I'm guessing they don't because of all the gums and everything to kind of make it a product. It's not lactose and, you know, just the chemical that makes up dairy that it would separate. So my guess is no, but I could be 100% wrong. I say, try it with a cup and see if it works. If anything, you're missing a cup of oat milk or almond milk. Good question. Okay, our last solid ingredient is a little bit of sweet onion. I know some people don't like to have raw onion in dishes, but it's sweet and it just adds that little something. You can leave it out if you want for sure. Um, but I like the bit of bite that it adds, sweet bite. I'm just thinking for the person who asked that question, if they have that yogurt in their house, if they could check if there's whey in the ingredients, that would be helpful for other people as well. I can't imagine that there's whey in almond milk though. What about coconut? Do you think in coconut yogurt? I just feel like whey is a byproduct of, of dairy. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we could Google it and find out. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm doing while I'm talking to you. <laughs> Remember when we had to like go to the library and figure things out? Okay. I'm adding salt and pepper. And then my lemon juice. Amy, someone's asking, would spring onions be an option? Yeah, totally. What's Sometimes a spring onion? 
a green onion. Oh, green. I thought she, they wrote spring. Well, onion. Is that spring another Spring green thing? is the same. Oh, okay, same. I learned something new. Oh, Thank interesting. you. Okay. And then, and, that, and guess what? It's also called scallion. Okay, that I knew. Okay. Oh, no look, we way. Have an answer. All, yeah, no way in almond milk. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, someone asked if you could move the phone, but not at this minute because your hands are full of lemon juice a bit so that we can see more of her cutting things than mixing. Okay. But, Sorry. Yeah, I should. Uh, wait, wait. It's okay. Well, I just finished this salad. Uh, and and then stir it up. And, okay. Yeah. We have a tip. Someone wrote, I'd like to remove the bite of raw onion by soaking it in white vinegar for 10 minutes and then add it to the salad. Yes, the tip. that's something you can do too. Because it's sweet onion, I do that with red onion. Because it's sweet onion, I don't find that it has too much bite, but that's, it. you're right. Lemon juice or vinegar, it would work great. So here's our finished Israeli salad. You can do it finer than I do it. Um, maybe I'll put together a little plate just so you can see what it would look like presented. I'm wondering if anyone's cooking along. You know, I did a cooking class. Um, I think it was to promote Scottish fish last week. And Mark McEwen was the host. They sent over this huge box of ingredients, pre-prepared and everything. You had to do it all together. The pace he was moving at was hilarious. He's like, okay, now reduce this by half. And then and I'm like this, and there's four recipes happening at once. It was so funny. And then I found out we weren't supposed to be cooking along at the same time, but I did it. Okay. And here we go. This is also nice. If you drizzle some. Um, Lovely. Olive oil over top. So there, there's dish number one for lunch. Okay. Let me throw some of this stuff in the sink and I'll move my board. Is it back or forward? I go like this. Is that a bit better? Okay. So what shall we make next? Let's make the pickles next. Okay, very easy. Does anyone want me to give them a minute if they have vinegar and sugar and water and salt and cucumbers in their house and a bit of dill, you can make these right now with me. Whoops. So should I forage forward or give like everyone 10 seconds? No, you can. Uh... I'll forage forward. Yes. No, no, but not too many people are leaving their computer, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, very simple, but let me just open my handy book. Everyone's like, why don't you know your own recipes? Not only did I write five cookbooks, but I also developed recipes for like food and drink magazine and different magazines and TV. And it's like, I have no memory skills whatsoever. The last thing I memorized was my bat mitzvah parsha, and that's the truth. So we need a few pickling cucumbers, like these little, I think they're called Persian cucumbers. But again, if you have a, an English cuke and you just want to cut it into wedges or circles, that's fine too. One cup of white vinegar, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, a half a cup of sugar, and a cup of water, and two tablespoons of chopped dill. Okay. So let me get my little pot. And I'm going to, how do you keep your leftover dill fresh to use later? Is there any, I know. Doesn't it come, yeah. It comes in such a big bunch. There are different, there are different um, ways that people say you can put it in water in a cup and cover it in a plastic bag and keep it in the fridge. I like to just kind of wrap it in moist paper towel and hope for the best and just make everything with dill that way. <laughs> I don't know why they don't sell it in smaller bunches, but it actually does really make me, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll make some grovlaxa. Huh? Maybe I'll 
make some dilled baby potatoes. Having extra ingredients you don't know what to do with for me is a great inspiration in the kitchen. Um, I normally don't use recipes, except if they're my own, I guess. And I just like, well, what, what can I do to put all of these things together? Because I like to have a zero waste household and just make something fresh and new with ingredients I like because they're in my house. Maybe we reimagine them in a new way together, right? It helps with creativity. Mm -hmm. So in a small pot, a cup of water. Did I say a cup of vinegar? Yes, white vinegar, just the stuff you would use for cleaning your house. And then half a cup of sugar, just white sugar. And don't worry, you're not eating all that sugar. It's just a pickling brine. Right, I was gonna ask, what if you don't wanna use all that sugar? Yeah, I mean, I will say whenever I give, I've been doing tons of these cooking demos on Zoom for different things. Like sometimes I'm the host with the chef, I'm the one asking the questions um, for, you know, like Dell computers. Like there's, through the pandemic, there's been so many companies that are just doing things to motivate their employees. So. And I do these bake-alongs every so often with my friend, Julie, she's from Calgary and people are making butter tarts with us. So with those, not so much, but normally it's like 90% of the questions are substitutions. And maybe I should study up on substitutions, but my whole thing is everything in moderation. I mean, and when you're baking, you, and you know, you can do what you want if you're cooking, but when you're baking, you're gonna have to, follow the recipe. So when people are substituting, someone said, can I, I was making a carrot zucchini loaf at the JCC. Can I substitute applesauce for the butter and sugar? No, you can't. It's not going to work if you're missing half the ingredients, right? So everything within reason. And another woman was saying she was diabetic. So she'll die if she eats my cake. I'm like, so don't make the cake, choose something else. That's, you know, I don't want to be an idiot, but this is the way it is. I'm definitely my uh, father's daughter that way. So I'm gonna put this on the stove. And we're just gonna let that heat up while I just cut my little pickles. Well, future pickles, cucumbers for now. Can you imagine if someone doesn't know, they're like, wait a minute, cucumbers are pickles? <laughs> um, and we're just gonna cut them into wedges. Amy. Yes. In the book, you, uh, you write about bagels, how you're obsessed with bagels. You eat a bagel every day. I see you have a picture of a bagel behind you with cream cheese. Yeah, that's an <laughs> illustration from the book, yeah. Tell us where in Toronto do you love to get your bagels? I know you have a bagel recipe in your cookbook, but if you're going out to buy bagels, what's your, where's your go-to place? I will say though, before I tell you, the bagel recipe in the cookbook, you know how there's viral recipes out there. If there's one viral recipe, it's the bagels. I didn't think people would really make them, but it, you can make them within an hour and you get fresh bagels out of your oven. And I would say, and this recipe was also run in on Root Magazine and an LCBO, and thousands of people have had success with the bagels, so make the bagels. So if you're not making your own, I like Grife's, but only if they're hot out of the oven. <laughs> and I love New Bagel, NU, in Kensington Market. They're very much like a Toronto meets Montreal bagel. But if I tell you where I usually get my bagels from, it is from Metro because they bring in the frozen Saint Viateur bagels from Montreal. So they ship them in frozen. You bring them home, you cut them in half, you refreeze them. So I'm basically eating twice frozen stale bagels, but I love them out of the toaster. It's fine. Um, so that's where I get my bagels from. But I will say now that Kettleman's is in Toronto, those might be the best. Okay, I've never had that. I'll have to make the trip there. Yeah, they're from Ottawa. 
So they're like a, a slight twist on a Montreal bagel and that they're a little puffier like a Toronto bagel. What are yours? So my favorite place in the city, which is a real big treat, it's uh, I love Schmaltz appetizing. Yes. But they don't make their bagels. They don't make their own bagels, yeah. but their smoked salmon is out of this world and their schmears are to die for and the whole thing. I mean, I pay $15 for a bagel, but I know it's, those it's, sandwiches it's totally are great. Worth it. I will say I don't have like a whole bagel sandwich every day. I have half a bagel with something on it, but you know, <laughs> but um, so if you're interested in what I think is the best Lux in the city, um, the, it's a kind of newish place, the Smoke Bloke. I don't know if they opened during or before the pandemic, but they sent me like a box of everything that they smoke. And it is like, it blows everything else out of the water. So look up the Smoke Bloke. They're, they're now in some stores, but it's mostly you order online. So delicately smoked, not oily. They also sell fresh salmon and just like their different flavors are, it's, it's just unbelievable. And so thinly sliced. It's like being at Russ and Daughters in New York. It's like, oh yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, it's incredible. Amy, for somebody who is gluten-free and I'm not looking at the bagel recipe at this moment, I do have your cookbook at home. Yeah. Can we substitute, if there's regular flour in the recipe, could we substitute gluten -free? free flour or ultimate or with make it with almond flour so i always say like for people who have um gluten-free uh celiac or or all these things they know in working with these different flours what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. and what application they work for so you know if if you've made yeasted doughs with um the gluten-free flour and it works, then it should work. I just, I, I wouldn't make a bagel with almond flour because I just feel like it would taste weird. Um, oh, the Lux is from the smoke bloke. Someone just asked, okay. Does that make sense? Like, you know, one, one of these days I'm gonna put more effort into figuring out all the substitutions because I'm not against substitutions. I just, I just haven't worked with them because that's not my thing. I'm kind of mainstream. So when I had my, um, my cinnamon bun shop, Rose and Cinnamon Buns, everyone would come up, do you have a vegan one? Do you have a gluten-free one? Do you have a sugar-free one? And I just would smile and say, we leave that to the experts. That's, that's not what I do here, so. And not in a mean way, just in a truthful way, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna put my pickles in a bowl and my solution is this, you just need for the sugar to dissolve. Um, it's in, I don't know where it is, they delivered. They deliver if you, apparently they deliver if you order a hundred dollars worth of stuff. Okay, and all you do is you pour it over, make sure they're submerged. Okay, and let it cool on the counter for an hour. Cover, I'm gonna put my dill in now. Okay. Cool, cover, refrigerate, an hour or when they're nice and cool about three hours after they're refrigerated you got homemade pickles they're like instant pickles basically come on I was talking about gluten-free flour and I made pickles that's amazing okay any more questions while I get ready for the final dish Amy, I have a question for you, but it doesn't have to do with this dish, but it has to do with salmon. When you buy salmon or salmon pieces, do you prefer to cook it with the skin on or the skin off? Oh, definitely skin on. 
skin it's on. like it's almost like roasting meat on the bone it adds the fat it keeps everything together and then when it comes out um it peels off so easily right. so if you had to remove the skin before that's you'd kind of mangle your fish and to take it one step further i like to roast not just uh what do you call the pieces of salmon uh fillet right is that what they're called i like to roast a side of salmon and then Got you it. cut it up right and it's just so much juicier more flavorful and a lot easier really okay all right so for our farmer's salad, you know what? Radishes, people love radishes. I don't love radishes. I always get them and then I'm disappointed. I'm like, why did I buy radishes? So for this dish, they add a nice little peppery bite and it's about the texture, you know, that soft crunch and everything's just kind of enveloped in this cheesy goodness. Um, so we have, again, we have sour cream, our old school pressed cottage cheese. And you're using both of these packages. So this, you, this makes a lot. You're gonna be having lots of scoops of farmer salad. Uh, cucumber, spring, green onion, and scallion. Lemon juice and radishes. And we're just gonna chop everything up and we're gonna stir everything together. So keep the questions coming while I chop. Amy. Yes. Do you like using organic or is that something that's important to you? And what is the difference? So organic, price. yeah, organic means it's certified in a certain way with soil and farming practices and the farm has to lay fallow for a few years. There's all these, these rules. What's more important to me is um, getting as much local as possible. So if that's going to the farmer's market or if that's just going to my local supermarket and, you know, seeing the little signs, oh, the first Ontario strawberries or Ontario asparagus or what have you, it's going to be often fresher than the organic stuff that's being trucked across from California or Florida. So as long as you wash everything, um, you know, I'm, I'm someone who's going to eat a Snickers bar and drink Diet Coke. I'm, my body is not my temple. Um, I think it's more important to eat vegetables and more vegetables and vegetables you can and fruit that you can afford rather paying a lot more for organic. But that's just my take on it. We have a question, Amy. Is the uh, dry pressed cottage cheese, is that dry pressed cottage cheese or regular pressed cottage cheese? What does it say on it? Okay, shelf? so it says pressed dry cottage cheese. Okay. 0.8% milk fat. And it's, it's a big package, it's 500 grams. So it's the stuff you use to make cheese blintzes. I'm, I'm amazed that they have it at my metro because I'm in little Italy and little Portugal. You can't even find a box of matzo there. So I'm wondering what the Italians and Portuguese are using. <laughs> Maybe cannoli. Maybe it's their secret. Who likes radishes? Let's just taste one again for the first time. You know what? Not bad. When I was growing up, my first job, besides teaching swimming, was at... Um, the fruit and vegetable store in Baby Village. I was a cashier, but it was called Baby Orchards. And before that it was called Lanzarote Brothers, I think. But um, so how, this is how old I was. I was there when kiwi first came to Canada and when people first had red peppers <laughs> instead of just green peppers and star fruit and like mango and um, the sabra with the prickly pear. So there were all these things like before someone bought a red pepper, I'd say, can I weigh that for you? Cause it's gonna be expensive and it would be $7. And then they'd yell at me or the prickly pear, I'd say, leave the tissue paper on it and they wouldn't. And then they'd be like, ow, I'm injured. And then I'd say, I'm 15 years old, leave me alone. Anyhow, we've come a long way with fruits and, fruits and vegetables. 
is what I'm saying. But we used to only have radishes basically growing up. Radishes, carrots, and tomatoes. Well, what are people out there cooking these days? I mean, are we following trends? Are we cooking what we've always cooked? I know Gail doesn't cook. Somehow the food just finds its way to her mouth. I'm not sure. How, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'm more of the, uh, let's uh, have the prepared food ready to go. Got so it. if we were to look in your fridge, yeah. What would you say we should we should have stocked in our fridge Ooh. at all times in case in case we have like unexpected guests and we're reopening and it's exciting that we can have like ten people in our backyard now. So, what should okay. we what should we have? You should have some nice cheeses, some olives, some uh, a bag of pistachios in the cupboard, always you know ready to go. Um, like in terms of prepared food, you know, you could have hummus. I make my own, but now there's even dill pickle flavor hummus. Has anyone tried chocolate hummus? Because I refuse, but I hear it's good. I'm assuming it doesn't have garlic in it. Um, yeah, just like, just stuff that's ready to go. Chips, make your own dip. People just want to nush in a light drink in the backyard. They don't want... If someone's dropping in, I don't think they want a salad, but I always have lots of fruits and vegetables in there. You know, Lux, we talked about Lux. That would be a good thing to put out because I, I don't put out charcuterie. I don't like cured meats. And um, if your guests are Jewish, that you're most likely not going to, you know, Amy, the milk with the meat. Yeah. Amy, what's the difference between smoked salmon and grab lox? <clears throat> so grab lox is cured but not smoked and smoked salmon is smoked got it so okay. cured under usually a salt and sugar rub so i have another question i'm doing oh just the statement maybe i'm doing a lot more stir fry because i have to order veggies once a week and seems uh they always send lots of veggies so it's a good way to use them up okay yeah and i bet you're uh, healthier i have to say grow like i had a, a roommate we were somehow roommates for five years, uh, Shrigit, so at McGill, and then we both ended up going to school in Halifax. And she was kosher and you couldn't really get kosher anything in Halifax. Um, and also we couldn't afford it when we were at McGill. So for five years, we would make either vegetarian pasta, vegetarian pizza, or vegetarian stir fry. And I never got sick of it because you can just, there's so many different flavors in, sauces and you know for stir fry and for uh pasta and then the toppings on the pizza can always change too right so i'm i'm not against someone making stir fry all the time it's, it never gets old for me and you know on some nice rice you switch up the rice or quinoa or whatever there's ways to make kind of your everyday food a little more exciting just by tweaking it a little bit. Okay. So did, does everyone know that I, um, I shot uh, Dragon's Den a couple weeks ago and it was the most disturbing experience of my life? That's all yes. I can tell you. Amy, can you talk about uh, your uh, rose and cinnamon buns and uh, I guess this Dragon Den's experience. Yeah, so um, I just one day I saw an Instagram ad and, like a few months ago, maybe it's like four or five months ago now, and they were looking for people to apply to Dragon's Den. So I'm just on the couch. Oh, you need a little video. <laughs> I, did, I sent it in and then I got a call and I'm like, oh my God. And so then a um, couple Zoom interviews and stuff, and I, I made the cut. Turns out that like over 2,000 people apply and they accept 100 people. So it's for, I have a business called Rose and Cinnamon Buns. It used to be a bakery, but now it's frozen bake your own buns. And um, our jarred uh, caramely cinnamon infused spread. So we have a cinnamon bun spread and a bupka spread. And they're in like 60 stores around Toronto. 
So I, because of COVID, my sister-in-law, Deborah, who deals with the money, if you've seen the show, you know, they really like you to know your numbers. Unfortunately, I know how much it costs to make everything and what we sell it for, but they were, you know, they were asking me numbers that in a way that I didn't know what they were talking about. And as much as they love my products, like after the first minute when they tasted everything, I was like, that, that's a million dollar commercial. I couldn't have written better lines. Like they love the commercial, they love the, um, the product, but they hated me. They didn't hate me. They hated that I didn't know the numbers. And uh, so I was telling my friends and family, like, it's all I can really say, like, glad I did it, scarred for life. Like it is real that they yell at you and um, you, it's going to be on in the fall. And, and the good part was you, they shoot a lot of people and you don't all make it to TV. But uh, my segment, I had been studying the show for uh, about a month. I have never seen an ending like mine. And I walked out of there going, well, they love the product. So we'll get a lot of sales. And maybe I got a deal. Maybe I didn't. But it's definitely making it to air. That was my takeaway. I went to bed that, that night and I was like lying in bed like this, like just thinking about everything that had happened. It was, it was crazy. So I'll tell you that show is a hundred percent real and true. They don't know who you are or what you're up to until you just walk into the den and the den is the scariest place on earth. Well, I'm exaggerating, of course. So that was my experience. Uh, your, your mother will have to keep us posted uh, when that's gonna air. Yeah. I might have a viewing party. Oh, yeah. Someone in the chat box suggested Parallel Brothers for the most delicious hummus if you're not making your own. Yeah, they do have amazing hummus there. I agree. Okay, I'm home stretch here. I'm going to squeeze my lemon, then stir in my sour cream and pressed cottage cheese, and then I'm going to season. So you see how easy and fresh everything's been, right? Like, did I even get out any olive oil? Like this is, this is just good, wholesome, healthy snacks, lunches, what have you. And this, yes, this is, my hands are clean. This is how I juice lemons. And now let's get these putting in the cream cheese. So I believe 250 milliliters or milliliters is a uh, cup. So that all goes in. And then the Western dairy. So what happens if Western dairy ever goes out of business? Who's gonna make the dried pressed cottage cheese? Okay. Liberty used to make it. I wonder if they're still making that. They may. Oh, oh I didn't know that. That's good to know. I'm excited for barbecue season. Barbecuing is the easiest. That just makes summer so easy, right? Like just people show up as long as you have stuff defrosted or ready to go. Just throw everything on the barbecue. Okay, I'm glad I have a big bowl here. And now we're just gonna stir up. Okay. So obviously the dry cheese is very dry. So, and very low fat. So the sour cream kind of balances it out, gives it the richness and the tang and the, uh, the moisture. Let me do it so you can see. It's a big bowl. You're gonna have to have a brunch. We're coming go, over. Yeah, everyone come <laughs> over. Who who misses United Bakers? They've uh, I think they've been doing okay, but I hope we can get back in there. ASAP. That's like to me, that's the Jewish Toronto restaurant. So Amy, what's the first restaurant you're gonna uh, go to now that we'll be able to dine outdoors? 
Oh my gosh, my friends and I have already been talking about it. I, I have a lot of friends in the industry, so it's, um, I'll be going to their restaurants first, you know what I mean? So I think the first reservation will be at Ascari on, on King Street. It's a nice Italian restaurant. They got a big patio. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's getting double vax. This is like, it's imminent. Life is getting back to normal any day now. So salt and pepper, there we go. So now I'll just show you what we made today. While I've been yapping away, things have come together. So we've got our labna and Israeli salad. Remember we made the pickles that are cooling. Okay. And our giant bowl of farmer's salad. I should turn off this light maybe. It's very white. I would garnish it with a, uh, a beautiful radish flower. I don't know how to make those, I'm just kidding. So there you um, go. Someone had a substitution question. Can you use plain yogurt instead of sour cream? You could, I just don't think it would taste quite as good. Cause you know, compare the taste of sour cream to yogurt, it's different. They're both tangy, but sour cream just has that richness to it. So I would say use low fat sour cream over low fat yogurt. That would be my preference. And one of our members did mention her mom would make this dish and instead of using sour cream, she uses 10% pressed cottage cheese. Oh, and no other thing to moisten it. Like, again, this was Judy's idea. And I, you know, based on her memory recipe, I put it together. I gave her a sample. She's like, that's what it sounds like. So I've never had it um, in real life from anyone but me making it. <laughs> so maybe I'm, this is my interpretation and maybe, um, it normally wouldn't even call for sour cream, but for it to be loose enough and, and spreadable and tasty enough, that's what I use. But of course, if you're using a higher fat uh, pressed cheese, that, that should maybe solve the problem. Maybe you need some olive oil or something else in there. Okay. What time is it? I have no idea. Oh, not too bad. Sometimes I really whiz through these things. Thank you, uh, Amy. We have some questions. Oh, okay, I, good. No, no, maybe that's not a question. It's Gail saying she's on the she's on a on the Zoom. <laughs> not Gail, our Gail, Gail, another Gail. Thank you, Amy. Uh, you've inspired me. Like we made lunch in fifty minutes, so that's great. Right. So, make um, one of the dishes or make all of them. I know you can do it. <laughs> You've inspired me. I have the cookbook and uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, trying to do some of the recipes. Gail, right. where can people order the cookbook or pick so it up? We, we do have a link uh, on our website uh, when you registered. And actually in today's email, as a reminder, we did put a link uh, to Indigo. It is on sale right now for about $25. And it's a great gift as well to, um, for anyone who's getting married, great shower gift. So yeah. highly recommend it, the book. It's also on sale um, at Amazon this week too, just in case. A friend of mine wanted to get it for all the teachers in her school and she was ordering 18 copies. And I was like, you don't need to do that. So I just checked Amazon and I noticed it was on sale. So great. Yeah. So before we go, I just want to share with the mem members, uh, I'm going to share my screen because we're going to be doing um, a summer reading series. And I want to introduce the books to people in case they, while they're ordering Amy's cookbook online, you can also order um, these books. So, uh, first, can you see it? Can yep. you see the screen, everyone? Yeah. No, we so, see. Uh, so we're uh, partnering with Classy Lectures, and we are uh, having uh, three authors come 
The first one is in July. It's uh, Jonathan Kaufman. He'll be in conversation with Rabbi Sachs. His book is The Last Kings of Shanghai. Then uh, we've picked Florence Adler Swims Forever. This is a debut novel by author uh, Rachel Beanland. And the third uh, author we'll be in discussion with is uh, Genevieve Graham. And she is a Canadian author who wrote Letters Across the Sea. So here on our website, we have the links. And uh, definitely uh, when you're buying Amy's cookbook, buy those books or get them out of the library and start reading because we have three books to read in about two months. I think that's enough time, but uh, the first uh, presentation with uh, Jonathan Kaufman will be July 21st, so just over uh, a month from now. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Doris. Thanks, Thanks everyone for, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you uh, at our next program, which remember tomorrow we have Out to Lunch with the Cantors. Bye for now. Bye.